Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today on our Training Thursdays with the Stoplight Customer Success Team. My name's Amy, and I am joined today by my colleague, Cheryl. And together, we're going to be your hosts for today's uh, training session. So to help eliminate some of the um, noise that you might see on your screen, Cheryl and I are going to go ahead and turn off our cameras now, but we'll join you again at the end. Um, but you'll hear us throughout uh, the session. All right. So before we get started, just a couple quick notes for us to go through. Um, first, if you would like to participate in our Q&A session that will be running in parallel with our presentation, please join us in our community on Discord. Look for the channel titled Training Webinar Q&A. We'll have um, people paying attention to that, monitoring that um, Q&A session so that we can answer any questions that come in. Um, the, those questions and answers will be available um, for about 24 hours after our webinar is done. So you, if you want to focus just on the webinar, you can always uh, log in and check out those later on as well. Also, during the tour of our workspace today, we'll be posting some product documentation links in the Zoom chat window. We invite you to click on and bookmark those for future reference. Uh, they will provide you with a deeper dive into the specific product functions that Cheryl's talking about at the time. So if that's something you want a little bit more information on, I encourage you to click on those for future reference. For those of you who may be watching the recorded version of this training, you can find those documentation links in the video description below. All right, so let's get started. The purpose of today's training is to review some key stoplight concepts and walk through an overview of the stoplight studio interface. I will start our session today with a quick overview of how the stoplight platform can assist you and your organization with your API development needs. And from there, we'll review a few key concepts within the platform. Then Cheryl will introduce us to the stoplight studio user interface and review the features and settings within studio. So let's take a quick look at the key features of Stoplight that can help you and your organization enhance your API development process. Stoplight's API design features allow you to develop quality APIs with a collaborative approach to an API design first philosophy. It helps create and prototype APIs using our intuitive visual editor for open API specifications, and you can create your APIs in line with industry best practices. Also, with the release of discussions, members can add comments, ask questions, and interact within the studio interface. Discussions, which was just released last week, also integrates with popular task tools like Jira and Slack to help facilitate collaboration outside of your workspace as well. With Stoplight's APA mocking features, you can instantly create a mock version of your API based on your open API specifications. This allows you to visualize and get feedback on your API designs before spending time on back-end service development. API mocking also allows your front-end client application developers and back-end services development teams to develop their projects in parallel. With Stoplight's API documentation features, you can provide a top-notch developer experience for internal and external consumers through automatically generated documentation based on your open API files. This will help internal and external users discover, learn, and integrate with your APIs quickly by publishing interactive API documentation, tutorials, and code samples that are always up to date. And with Stoplight's governance features, you can govern your APIs at scale with an always in sync central repository of API designs schemas, and API documentation. You can easily share, apply, and enforce standards across all of your API designs to provide consistency, reusability, and better governance throughout your API program. You can utilize Stoplight's public style guides to leverage sets of curated API design rules from top companies around security and design themes. And using the proposals feature, you can see recent API design changes at a glance and keep track of changes across your Git connected projects. Now let's take a minute to review some of the important concepts to understand within, Stipe, within Stoplight, namely the Stoplight hierarchy and the two main user interfaces that you will encounter within Stoplight. Your hierarchy begins within your workspace. In there, you have users and teams, Teams are, a group, are users that are grouped together for easier management. 
And then you have projects and groups. Groups are a collective of projects stored together in a folder, again, for easier management. Within your projects, you'll have APIs and style guides. And within your API projects, you'll have endpoints, models and schemas, docs and articles, and applied style guides. Stepping back up to the workspace level, the owners and admins of your workspace will have the ability to manage workspace settings, manage members, and create and manage teams. Within your workspace, you'll see a list of all API and style guide projects, and from your workspace, you'll also create new projects. As I mentioned, your projects can be organized into groups for easier management. For example, a group of your public APIs and a group for your internal APIs. As you begin to edit individual API or style guide artifacts and documentation, you'll transition from your workspace user interface into the studio user interface. Your technical team and API design architects will likely spend the majority of their time within the studio user interface. Within scope of a single project within studio, you may have one or many API designs and open API specifications, models, and API documentation articles. And within a style guide project, you'll have the ability to manage rules and functions for your style guide. When you transition between your individual stoplight projects, you'll navigate from studio back to the workspace where you can select a new project and then head back into studio to edit the specific artifacts associated with that project. Today, we'll be focusing on the studio user interface and how your API developers and tech writers will be utilizing the tool to create and edit their different projects. So now that we have have a comp have completed a quick overview of Stoplight, I'd like to hand it over to Cheryl, who will be conducting a tour of the Stoplight Studio interface and show us how our API developers and tech writers will interact within Studio. Cheryl, I'll give it to you. Thank you, Amy. All right. So I switched over to our workspace. Now, based off of your role and your subscription, your screens may look a little bit differently. I'm logged into a pro uh, professional subscription version and I am an owner of the workspace. So I have a lot of tabs across the top. If you are a maker, you may not have as many uh, tabs across the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a tour of the studio. I'm gonna go through and kind of show you all of the different areas and the tools within the Stoplight Studio um, application or platform. And then from there, we'll come back and we'll build uh, and demo specifically building a project in Studio. So one of the first things that you'll do if you um, don't have anything pinned on your left-hand side uh, quick access sidebar here is you'll go to your projects tab. And in your projects tab, you may already see uh, a bunch of groups created for you. If not, um, you have the ability to create them. And we're gonna come down here to the group Training Thursday and we have a, a project that is already existing. And when we click on that, it activates uh, a quick access side panel uh, for the project, it's a project panel. And in this project panel, you will see uh, the, re the features of the reusability functionality within Stoplight, as well as some links down here at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Now, um, if you're creating a new project, of course, you'll use the, the new project button at the top right-hand side. But down here to get into a project, you can enter into a project through this edit version button, or you can go to the go to back or go to docs button. And I apologize, I, uh, I'm battling a cold. So I sound probably pretty nasally to you guys. And um, I may pause a minute or two if I need to uh, mute so I don't blow your eardrums out if I have to cough. But anyway, so if you click on that go to uh, docs button, it will take you to a view just as if you were clicking on the pin. Uh, in the side panel, and you'll see kind of a layout of all of the artifacts within your API. So we're going to go ahead and enter into this particular project through this uh, side panel. And when I click on edit, you'll you'll notice that um, you'll have several different areas within this studio. And we're going to talk about the top 
toolbar. We're going to go over the buttons in the top of the toolbar. And then we're going to also talk about this editor pane, which is in the center. And then we're going to go into the side panel here on the project side panel. OK, so we're going to go ahead and start at the top left. You um, have the back to the workspace button, and it just simply does that, takes you back to the workspace. Just to the right of it, you have a hamburger menu. When you click on the hamburger menu, you can come down and you have the ability to go back to the workspace again as well. You have preferences, and in the preferences, you can choose a different theme. So this is user specific. It does not affect your colleagues who might be working in the workspace. This is for your view only. So if you use uh, prefer the dark view, you have the ability to use the dark view. Um, I prefer the, the light view. I'm just used to that. And uh, the next thing is a download project zip. One of the things that is a best practice recommendation uh, within a stoplight is that you leverage the download project zip. So once you've completed a project, then what we recommend is you come in here and you download this as a zip. That gives you the ability to kind of save a backup file. So if something gets corrupted, something gets changed drastically that you did not want changed, you have a file that you can revert back to. And you also have the ex, uh, export spectral file um, here as well. So you do have the ability to export the spectral files. All right. Next to that is the keyword search button. The keyword search button is just that. It, it's a keyword search where you have the ability to come in here and type in a keyword and it will show you uh, any items or artifacts that you have within your project with that specific um, keyword name, okay? Pretty simple. The next one is the plus button. This plus button is jam-packed and fully loaded. So it gives you the ability to create an API, an endpoint. You can create a model or an article. And then we have this stoplight config button and this particular config button gives you the ability to, so if you have a Git repository associated with your particular workspace or with your project, it allows you to place some perimeters around um, including or excluding the files that are pulled into your project from your repo. And um, there's a lot more functionality in this particular bu uh, button. So we recommend that you take a look at the documentation that's being shared in the chat. All right. So you also have the ability to bring in an image. And then you have the table of contents. So the table of contents also gives you the ability to kind of customize the order of the files that are appear in the sidebar in the workspace under the project. You can overwrite a title of a file or customize uh, published URLs or articles or artifacts. And you can selectively add and remove those files in the sidebar, allowing you to hide them in the table of contents. And um, you can also set an API or an article to have um, internal visibility that prevents those files from appearing in a public project uh, and exposing it to uh, non-members of your workspace if you're working in the in the public um, side of things. And you can also uh, set a default state for those groups to be expanded and collapsed. So there's a lot of functionality there. All right, at the bottom half of that particular drop down, you'll have the ability to create a file or create a directory, and then you can import a style guide, import a file, or import a directory. Okay, so right to the right of that, this green button, this green button, or it's a publish commit button, it may not be green in your in your workspace, I apologize. But it is the publish button if you were working with a stoplight hosted um, a project or a, a stoplight web project. 
And it would be, it would say the word commit if you have a Git repository associated with it. Now, right now, I am just working in the Stoplight uh, hosted projects. So currently, I do not have a Git repository associated to this particular workspace as of right now. But if you did, it would it would change. The words would change. And that uh, the publish commit button, if you think about it, um, it gives you the ability to kind of save it, you know, save the last, you know, the version of the changes that you've made. Over to the right of that, you have a little drop down arrow. And that drop down arrow, you have uh, discard changes since last publish. This is a handy little button. I really, this is one of my favorite buttons. This button gives you the ability to close the session without saving. And then you can pull open, it'll pull open the previously last saved version. So if there were a lot of changes and you don't want to save, you want to scrap everything that you did without saving, it's like, think about it as closing the file without saving and then opening that file again. It would just open up the last saved version of that. Okay. Over to the right hand side, you're going to see the name of your particular project so that you don't get confused as to which project you might be in. And then right next to that is the branching branch and version management button. It gives you if it has a little drop down and you can create a new version or a branch. So version is associated to the stoplight hosted projects. And branch is associated to like a Git or a, a Git project that is associated. Um, so one of the things that we recommend um, you doing before you uh, develop a specific strategy is, is we ask you to go in and take a look at the documentation associated to our versioning and our the branch management recommendations. That way you can develop the best possible strategy for your for your API design and development. All right, over here to the far right-hand side, you're gonna see a kind of a grayed out button. This gray out button is the comments button or just recently dis uh, the what we call the discussions uh, feature that was re released last week. And that will give you the ability to collaborate with your uh, workspace members and your colleagues on an API design document and we'll show a lot more about this uh, here later in the in the future demo here. And then you have the share button. The share button gives you the ability to invite members to this particular project. You can invite teams as well, and you can control the level of visibility to this particular project. All right. So now we're going to take a look kind of at this center panel, which is the editor panel. The editor panel gives you the ability to kind of uh, see all of the details. And so, and you kind of see what I mean when we start diving a little bit deeper into each of the, uh, the APIs or the artifacts that are specifically associated with this project. But in the end, without anything being selected, you'll have uh, buttons that you can create. So these are kind of a quick link button, if you will. You also have then buttons that gives you the ability to import some of the um, Postman collections or if you have files that you need to import. And then down in the recent section, now this is user specific, so it is going to be just specific to you. If you are popping in and out of different projects, it will kind of give you a little bit of a history of where you've been popping in and out. And it also gives you kind of a shortcut. You can then go back and click on those and it will take you back into that particular project. And then you have the help section. And the help section gives you kind of quick links to the studio documentation. It, you can go to a quick start guide for the workspace. You can report a bug and also request a feature from here. All right. Over here in the left-hand side panel of the project, you're going to see tabs across the top. And then you're going to see files or artifacts listed here in your side panel. When you click on a particular um, 
artifact or a an API that may have been uh, uploaded to your particular project, you're going to see your screen change quite a bit. And um, you'll see that the screen kind of split in half. And you'll see uh, on your left hand side, you'll have kind of the form view of the, the project or of the API itself. And you can toggle back and forth between the code and the form view on the left hand side of your screen in that editor pane. And if you prefer working on code, you can work from the code side. If you like uh, the shortcut with the form, we can you can do the the form side okay one of the things that i wanted to call your attention to was this little radial button here that's got the word internal ne right next to it if you are working on a particular project and it is a public project but it has lots of work that needs to be done to it then you can trigger that radial button and it will then make that particular API a an internal project for internal visibility only until you are ready to finally publish it for the, the public. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then over to the right hand side, you're going to notice the uh, stoplight automatically generated um, article or uh, documentation that is created for you in a preview mode and it gives you kind of a, a highlight of what you might be expecting with a particular API. And then that same field has another toggle button where you can toggle over to see um, any errors. Now, if you click on this error button and you see lots of errors, it is because there are style guides associated to my particular workspace. And those style guides are being applied to this particular API and so it means that I need to come in here and do quite a bit of correction to be able to fix those errors. Okay, and you can toggle between those two buttons to be able to see those. And you'll notice right above it at the top right hand corner, that comments button now is live. And when you click on it, it gives you that panel to be able to go into conversations with others in your workspace, all right? And if you click off of it, it'll disappear again, okay? So we're gonna also take a look over here on the left-hand side in this um, project side panel. You, you notice that the uh, panel is now split into two. The top half of this particular sidebar is um, the reusability within the project. So any P item model schema or API that um, is available to be reused within the project will show at the top half of your bar. The stuff down at the bottom half of the bar is in the API, um, API overview field. And this particular API overview section are specifically reusable items that are reusable within the API. So hopefully that is clear. Hopefully you can kind of understand if you have some models or schemas that are in this bottom half of this section, it means that those models and schemas are only reusable within that API, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the second tab in this side panel, which is the documentation tab. So if you were to go ahead and click on an artifact that is in there, you're gonna see that the screen then changes kind of differently than what you've seen previous. The screen shows you the stoplight flavored markdown. Okay, it is stoplight flavored markdown. And we do give you a toolbar across the top. Again, you have another one of those radio buttons that you can toggle to change your public project to be internal until you're ready to expose it to the, the public if you want to do that. And then you also have over to the right hand side, a button. If you click on that, that is the stoplight auto generated documentation. And it will show you kind of what you're looking to maybe expect as far as the generation of the documentation when it's not in markdown view. 
And whatever you see here would be the article that would show kind of possibly in your first uh, view of the API and the project, if it were public facing, or if you had internal users that were using it, they could they could click on those particular documents and see those. All right, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this uh, in my demo. We're going to go ahead and go over to the files tab. Now, the files tab is the tab that holds all of the artifacts that and or files that have been imported. APIs that have been created, any models or schemas that might have been imported or created are all going to show in this particular folder. And if you create a table of contents, your table of contents would appear here as well. Okay. And then we're going to go on to the styles tab. In the styles tab, you're going to, uh, when you click on that, you're going to see quite a bit of stuff populate if you have existing uh, style guides that are applied to your workspace, they're gonna appear right here um, under the style guides that are enabled. And then over to left-hand side, you're gonna see a panel where you can then dive a little bit deeper into the rules within those particular style guides. So if you have questions specifically about those particular rules, you can come there and kind of look a little bit deeper into those particular rules. Then over to the right hand side, you're going to see um, a manage style guides button if that's enabled for you. Um, the admins and the owners do have the ability to disable that functionality for you. So um, if you don't see it, uh, just know that that's probably uh, what's happened is, is that it's been disabled for you. But we're going to come back and kind of look a little bit deeper into this. But if you click on that, you can see the style guides that are applied to uh, your particular workspace. All right, so we're going to go ahead and travel back to our workspace and we're going to kind of start by creating a project and I'll demo that for you. Um, keep uh, posting questions in the uh, discord channel so that uh, our teams can go ahead and continue to answer your questions and um, we're going to go ahead and go up to the, the plus button in the, the side panel on the right hand side of the side panel. If you click on that plus button, it's going to take you to your create a project field. And we are going to um, kind of take a look at this screen here. On the left hand side, you have the ability to add a Git rep repo. Um, if you have a Bitbucket or a GitLab, you, you can add all of those repos. You can add them to your particular project. You can at the top, you'll notice there's two tabs. You can create an API. Or if you're in your governance team and you're writing, you can create a style guide, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to name our project and we're just gonna call it our demo project. We're gonna make our visibility on this particular project public. And then I'm gonna add it because it's it's one of the best practices recommended for uh, from Stoplight is, is that you leverage your groups and you can create a group or if you already have a group existing, we're going to just add it to our existing Training Thursdays group. And uh, when you do that, it'll populate into the field here, and then you can create, click on the Create an API project. And you'll notice that it, uh, your screen is kind of blank. You're starting from scratch when you create an API, a brand new project. So there's um, different ways we can go ahead and we can um, create some from scratch files. We can, of course, import. Uh, you'll notice over to the left hand side, it looks a little bit differently right now because there isn't anything created. You'll see some buttons here. You can import a file, um, an API or a model. You can go to your plus button. Your plus button will give you the ability to do all of that functionality as well. And the other uh, quick shortcut is you can right click. And if you right click in that side panel, you can cr um, create a new uh, API and you have the option to choose. You can create a model or you can import a file. Okay. So one of the first things that we're going to do is I'm going to go in. I have a, an API um, spec that I'm going to import and we support multiple different file types. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import an open API file. And I have that loaded right here on my computer here. So we're going to go ahead and import that. 
And um, I also have a Postman collection that I want to go ahead and import. So I'm going to go ahead and import that over from uh, the right click in the side panel. Click on that Postman collection. I'm going to go ahead and import that as well. Um, I need to create a uh, an open I you know an open API as well, just a, a baseline API, so that there can be some additional develop in that. So why don't we go up here to the plus button, and uh, we're going to click on the plus button and and go to the open API. When you do that, you'll get uh, this pop up box, and it gives you the ability to name we're going to go demo api and then you can change uh like change the different versions of the open api spec that it is supported in the format as well as a yaml or a json or you can go in then imp import a file um, into your particular api uh, and we're going to go ahead and create that open api so when you'll notice when you create just the baseline, you're going to see some basics that come in and it's already created for you because it's leveraging that open API spec. And if you click on the code, you can see the just the basics that are there created for you. And you'll notice um, you have an automatically generated API um, document that Stoplight creates for you in the baselines and then as the style guides get applied you'll you'll see the style guide um, errors that uh, show up if uh, there's things that need to be corrected or fixed or started from there okay all right so we're going to go ahead and i also need to create a model and uh, because that that model is going to be reusable uh, I'm going to need that reusable and, and I'll show you here. We'll click on create a model and that um, we're going to call that. Sorry for the original naming conventions here, folks, but uh, we're going to go ahead and create a model. And uh, best practices is, is that you you build um, tagging within it so that things can be found. So we're going to create a training tag. All right. And then right below that, you're going to see the scope. You're going to see the common, uh, the common button. The common means that it is usable or reusable within the project itself or an overall in the project. Okay. So if you built it, it should show up in the in the com on the top half of your side panel. When I was explaining to you the top half and the bottom half. It'll show up in the top half when you create it. If you were to create a single API it, and you clicked on that particular button, it would show up in the bottom half of your, um, your screen because then it would only be usable or reusable within that specific API. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as a common because I want it to be reusable within uh, the project throughout the project in the different APIs. And we're gonna go ahead and create that. And you'll notice that you'll see some baseline, uh, baseline uh, spec that is created for you. And you can see it there. If you click on the preview, you're gonna see kind of the string uh, for that as well. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead then and come in here and take a look at a couple things. So you'll notice that this uh, Postman echo file that I imported has quite a few errors in it. And it's going to take me quite a while to be able to get through some of that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that radial button and I'm going to make it an internal document for now. I, I don't want it being exposed to the public right now because there is a lot of work that still needs to be done on that and where me and my colleagues are going to need to do some of that work. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and click on this um, this API spec that I uploaded earlier today. Um, and you'll notice that the screen changes again when I have the bottom half of that screen. I have the reusability of that API, uh, the, the different feet functionality or paths within that API. And um, you'll see the code and the, the form sections. Again, we're going to add um, 
the errors. And I have a couple errors that I am going to go ahead and create, uh, kind of do some fixes for you guys on that. If you click on your particular error, it's automatically going to take you to that section in the code view. And as I'm reading here, it's an HTTPS protocol uh, error. But when I look at here, I'm, I see there's a typo. So I am just going to very simply fix that typo. And when I do, you'll notice off to the right-hand side that that warning error has gone away. So I, I fixed it. I found the issue that it was identifying. And then um, if I click on this particular warning, it's telling me that there's an object, the, the context object. And just to make it a little easier on myself, I'm going to go to the form view of the of that particular object because I know exactly what it's asking me to do. Spend enough time with those style guides, so you're gonna you're gonna know that too. So it needs to have contact information populated for this particular API spec. So I'm gonna go ahead and populate my information here, and we're gonna populate the the URL. And we're going to populate the contact email. All right. So, and when I do that and I tab out, you'll notice off to the right hand side that that warning has disappeared as well. So, I feel pretty good about this particular API. So, I don't need to uh, make it an internal because when I go to publish, then it'll be ready for the um, the public to be able to view this particular uh, API. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and select off of that because I'm, I need to go in and create a document for it, an, an article that will give an explanation of what, what I'm trying to achieve in these APIs. And so you can see when there is no uh, article created, you can use the article button here. You can also do the same thing. You can right click and you can create a new article here. You can use the plus button or you can create an article from your editor pane. So let's go ahead and click on the article button on the left pane. And we're gonna call this our um, demo training article. And we are going to leverage tags here as well. We're going to leverage the tag training again. We're going to create that. And when we do, your screens will change. And you'll see the stoplight flavored markdown that comes in. And you'll have the, the stoplight toolbar, the stoplight flavored markdown toolbar across the top that you'll be able to leverage. Again, there's that radio button. So if you still got a lot of time that you need to invest in creating that, but rather than see me uh, spend a lot of time creating a markdown, I have some markdown already created that we will paste in. And uh, you'll notice off to the right hand side that you have the preview. And you can then kind of peruse the preview just to make sure that this is what you're expecting when it comes to the um, markdown that you've created. You also have the ability to, um, you can always borrow uh, Stoplight's um, landing page markdown and you can paste it in here and then kind of build from there as well. Whatever is easiest for you. If you have, if you have teams that uh, spend a lot of time in markdown, then they may not need to, to leverage anything. They may already have something written and created for you. All right, so this is exactly what I am looking to achieve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the publish button because I want to make sure that this particular document and article is um, available to the public. And then you'll notice when it's successful, you'll get these green boxes down here at the bottom. If there was something that was wrong and it didn't post or um, save, you, you would get a red bar that would give you kind of a notice on what that issue is. And then sometimes it'll pull up a box that gives you the ability to invite team members to a particular project. So we're gonna go ahead and take a, um, you know, one thing that we forgot to do, and I'm gonna come back over here real quick. Um, 
silly me, I wanted to demo you for you guys the uh, the comments button because this new feature is really exciting and fantastic. So we're going to do that right now. You'll notice that it is highlighted and in green or uh, in a color here uh, and it's comments. So when you click on that, you're going to see that comments box pull up here. And um, one of the great, the really kind of cool things is, is it gives you an ability to um, to collaborate with your colleagues. And so you'll notice uh, my colleague, Amy, is in the workspace and you'll know that by the little A or whoever your colleague is that's in the workspace working with you in this particular project, you'll see their name. And you can tag in um, here the person that you're looking to contact. And we're gonna ask Amy um, about this particular API spec. Um, do you have a summary for this API? Okay. And so when you finish, you can click the send button or you can annotate. So if you click the annotate, you'll have the ability, it gives you a kind of a balloon and you can point out. Now, I do want to point out that this only works in the form view as of right now. If you are to click the code view, it goes away. It does not currently work in the code view. Um, it does give you the ability to um, do that. So just because I clicked off of that, um, it went away. So I apologize. All right. And we're going to go ahead and annotate that and I'll show you how that works again. And we're going to go ahead and send that off to Amy. So when uh, when you send it off, just so you are aware, you um, you just know that your colleague will be getting an email notification. So if they're not in the workspace working currently or if they're not in this particular project working, they'll get an email communication notifying them that that you have tagged them in something so that when they uh, get that notification, they can come in and start working. And you'll see that it does it live. So you can see that um, uh, when I click over the annotate, it shows the, the area. So there's no question to Amy on what I am referring to in this particular. And she's suggesting that we leverage the sample uh, title here. So we're gonna go ahead and post that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. And I want to make sure that that is published as well. So thank you, Amy, for that comment. And you can make that disappear again by clicking that comments box. And my apologies, I wanted to show that to you. I was excited about showing that to you and I skipped over it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the files tab. So you're going to be able to see the files that I have imported and, and there's the models that um, have been created for this particular API. And then in the styles guide, uh, the style, you'll see the style guides that are associated to the workspace. And when you click on your manage styles guide, you're gonna have the ability to uh, see the different style guides. And the top part of your window is gonna show the style guides that are uh, available um, and enabled for your workspace specifically. And then if you scroll down, you're gonna see the public style guides that are available. And the ones that are the public style guides that are in use and enabled are gonna be highlighted in a color, kind of with a bold um, outline to it. And you have the ability to preview and then you can disable those as well. And you'll notice that I have three different style guides that are being applied to my. And you can also, if you had questions on a particular style guide, if you click on the preview, it'll actually open up a, another tab to give you the details about those rules within that particular style guide. So you can spend a little bit of time checking out those style guides to see. And then if you do want it, you can enable it or disable it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. And we're going to go ahead and go back to our workspace so that we can kind of see what everything looks like after it has been um, created. 
And you'll notice on my, my sidebar here, my quick access sidebar, that the demo project that I created is automatically pinned. So if you pin that particular project, um, it'll it'll show up here. But if you create it yourself, if you are the creator, it'll automatically pin it for you. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And it's gonna take just a minute, it's gonna load. And um, you'll see the documentation that I created for that is in view. And it'll show all of the artifacts that I had created for that. And if you needed to go back into it, you could create, um, click on that edit button to take you back in there. All right, so if you saw any specific feature that uh, you liked or was curious about, we recommend that you check out our documentation. Our documentation team has done a really great job of making that documentation user friendly. And um, looks like we might have, a, do we have any questions? Is there anything that we might wanna bring out and, and ask? to the group since we might have a few more minutes? Uh, nothing specific, Cheryl. Um, we're answering questions actively in the chat and um, also in our um, Discord community. So, um, but nothing to, nothing to call out specifically here. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to Amy and we're gonna go ahead and continue. Thanks so much, Cheryl. I know that that was a ton of information that Cheryl just shared with us. So um, as a quick reminder, we did post some um, links to documentation in the chat window. So if you didn't have a chance to, to grab those and you might want to, I just wanted to give that little reminder for you um, before we wrap up our call today. And the last thing I wanna go over before we do wrap up is um, just to talk through some of the different uh, subscription plans that we have here at Stoplight. So you can leverage a selection of software as a service subscription options fully hosted by Stoplight for your API design, mocking, documentation, and governance building blocks. Stoplight's free plan allows you to begin exploring Stoplight's design first features and allows you to collaborate with up to three users on one project within your workspace. Moving up to Stoplight Starter subscription plan, your subscription includes five users who can collaborate on up to 10 projects, and it unlocks uh, the ability to have approved email domain and custom workspace domain features within your workspace. You can also purchase additional license user licenses as needed. And then by leveling up to Stoplight's professional subscription plan, your subscription includes 10 users on up to 100 projects, along with 20 teams and 50 guest users. And again, you can purchase additional user licenses as needed. With external guests, you have the ability to invite users who are external to your organization to your Stoplight projects so that they can view your internal API design specifications and documentation articles from behind an authenticated session. The professional plan also unlocks additional single sign-on options, such as SAML and LDAP, You'll also have additional Git provider options, such as Bitbucket server and Azure DevOps server, and custom domain features within your workspace, which allow you to use your own host name to access your Stoplight hosted API designs and docs. And you'll have access to the discussion features to help collaborate uh, within your workspace and externally. And lastly, with Stoplight's Enterprise Subscription Plan, your subscription includes 25 users, unlimited projects, unlimited external guests, and unlimited teams. You also gain the ability to access volume license discounts when purchasing additional user licenses. You have additional account invoicing flexibility and custom payment terms. And finally, you have enhanced onboarding and training engagements with our customer success team and enhanced priority for your support cases. Well, that wraps up our training session for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that we had some questions that were asked in the chat and I've tried to capture those. So I'll be posting those in, um, in our community on Discord. So you'll be able to access all those questions and the answers to those in the community. So you can check that out. Those will be available for about the next 24 hours once we get them posted. So thanks again for joining us today. Um, mark your calendars. We typically have a training Thursday on the second Thursday of every month. And if you'd like to learn more about Stoplight, you can always visit us in YouTube by searching for Learn with Stoplight webinars. And you'll find our playlist of all of our past webinars, as well as some short how-to um, training videos that will walk you through specific features within the tool. 
So thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.